anything that will make you stand before Jesus ultimately and you'll be crying. It's not worth it. You know, oftentimes we've heard things like, well, um, that man has a calling. There's no believer that doesn't have a calling. Am I communicating with you? The being a saint is a calling. Am I communicating with you? That the Bible tells us that we have been chosen in the Lord before the foundation of the world to be holy, to be blameless, and to be before him in love. And he has predestined us to adoption as sons. Is that understood? That every single person on the face of the earth that is a member of the body of Christ is he has he or she has a call of God upon his or her life. The first is that you have been called to be a member of the body of Christ. And that body of Christ is the fullness of him that fills all things on the face of the earth. So you can't get here, thank you. You can't come here and say you don't have a calling. Am I communicating with you? Jesus has been given to be the head over the church by God. The Bible tells us that clearly. All right? However, the church is the body of him that fills all things on the face of the earth. When a man gives his life to Christ, the Holy Spirit infuses that man or joins that man into the body. Therefore, that man becomes part of the body of Christ, manifesting Jesus on the face of the earth, pursuing the reconciliation and the redemptive purpose of God in the earth. So you have a calling. Is that understood? Are you listening or you want to go home? Thank you. Okay? So there is no believer that does not have a calling. However, the manifestation of the ministry that each of us have received or the manifestation of our ministry differ one from another. Am I communicating with you? For some of us, we've been given the privilege of pulpit work. Some other people, the platform that God has given to them for ministry may be a market, may be the marketplace. While they are teaching children, God will give them the opportunity to disciple presidents of nations who will manifest in 50 years. That's ministry. Am I communicating with you? For some people, while they are prescribing drugs, God will give them a healing ministry to tell them that, okay, you know what, you could use this eye drop, use this eye drop, but why not let me pray with you? And Jesus will heal you. And the person receives healing from that prayers before the person uses the drug and come back to the farm. <laughs> to the farm and say, okay, yeah, you have two farms in the house. <laughs> to the farm and say, madam, you know, before I used the drug, I woke up and the thing is gone. And say, oh, it's Jesus. And you witness the Lord to that person and the person comes to the faith. Am I communicating with you? Now, the pulpit does not do that or cannot do that in that particular place. Because the pulpit is a platform as much as your place of work is a platform. Am I communicating with you? However, it is possible for ministry to be a divine assignment or to become personal ambition. And I want to do an illustrative sermon using two people in the Bible. The first person is the person of Solomon and the second person is the person of Absalom. Solomon and Absalom. These two men were born by the same father. Which makes it even more interesting. That unbelievers do not talk about ministry. The people that talk about ministry are believers. And you can have two believers doing ministry. One is ambition. The other is an assignment from God. When you read the Bible, you see the story where Jesus Christ was talking to them in Matthew chapter 7. And he said, I will liken to a wise man whosoever hears my word and he does them. I will liken that man to a man that builds his house on the rock. But to the other who hears my word and does not do them, I will liken that man to the man that builds his house on the sand. When the rain came, fell, the wind blew, the flood came, great was the fall of the latter house. Am I communicating with you? Now understand this, that the man that hears the word of God and does the word of God, the word who does them is continu present continuous. Am I communicating with you? That is not talking to a non-believer. It's talking to believers who receive the word of God on a daily basis and who are expected by God to yield their spirit in obedience to the instructions they've received. 
But the unbeliever is not even in this picture. So the man that built his house on the sun Jesus was talking about there largely deals more with a believer who is living in um, willfulness and stubbornness to the instructions of God and another believer who is living in submission and obedience to the word of, the, of God. Am I communicating with you? Both of them are standing in front of Jesus, the son of God, all right? Both of them are standing in front of the creative word of God by which the whole earth is created. Both of them are standing in front of him that fills all things by whom all things are reconciled back to the father. One of them is ambition. The other is vision. Both of them are ministry. Am I communicating with you? And so, you would liken from this particular um, one we're looking at, you will see very beautiful examples and traits of ambition in the life of the sons of um, David you refer to as Absalom and Adonijah. When you look at Solomon, you will see a very clear trait of vision in the life of Solomon. The first thing we'll see is this. Divine vision comes from surrender to God, his judgments, and the counsel of his will. In the life of David, we saw that David had committed sin against God by killing Uriah and getting Bathsheba pregnant. And after Bathsheba was pregnant, God came to David and God brought judgment. God struck the first child and the child died. And David humbled himself before the Lord and he repented. And after David had repented from what you may call an ambitious project or a, a lifestyle of sin or a ministry of sin. Huh? Because you will find out that in the Bible, man represents something. A child had been given back to by the error of David. Do you understand what I'm saying? Regardless of the fact that Uriah was the wife of um, um, Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah. When David slept with Bathsheba, God did not stop Bathsheba from conceiving. So the fact that what you are doing is a sin does not mean if you carry the gift of God into a sinful process, it cannot produce something on the face of the earth that looks like it is legitimate. Am I communicating with you? And so the son that was killed could have been permitted to live by God. But God did not permit it to live and that's an act of mercy. And that's one prayer you and I need to pray. That everything that we use the grace and the gift of God to do illegitimately should not survive. That the judgment of God should come upon it and redeem us and help us to build afresh that which is the desire of God. Because afterwards, we will see David through repentance again, now went into Bathsheba and gave back to a child. As a matter of fact, the child that he gave back to was a child of prophecy because the Lord came to him in Second Chronicles to tell him, the child you will give back to, I will make him a man of rest. His name shall be called Solomon. And that is the only son David gave back to that God was the one that gave the name. Every other one, David gave the name in different circumstances. And so we see that Solomon is a type and shadow of vision. Born after repentance, born in an atmosphere of surrender and humility, born in yieldedness to God. What about Absalom? Absalom's name simply means the father of peace. But Absalom's mother's name is Hegite, which means festival or celebration. And so you one thing about ambition is that ambition likes noise. Ambition likes unnecessary visibility. Ambition likes crowd. Although it is capable of packing itself as if it is peaceful and restful. Notice Solomon is called the son of rest. All right? Absalom's name is the father of peace. In other words, this is not just rest. I am the great daddy of peace. 